Hello, my name is Aviva and today I wanted to share with you all of the books that I read in the month of July. So I did end up getting through a total of 23 books, which is honestly pretty surprising considering the month that I've had. So I started this month off by going to Book Bonanza, which was a book signing event that took place in Dallas, Texas. And I honestly had an amazing time and I vlogged the whole thing for you guys. So if you missed it and you want to check it out, I'll make sure to have that video linked in the description below. But either way, after that, I came home and the very next day I ended up breaking my foot, which was extremely unfortunate and honestly made for a very interesting past couple of weeks. So yeah, that happened. And then to top all of that off, I have been in a pretty horrible reading slump. If you did see my June wrap up, then you might be aware that, you know, I had a pretty bad month of reading that month. And then those feelings basically just like ended up trickling into this month and I didn't have the best reading month, but happens to be over the past couple of days, I have been reading a couple of books that have been really working for me. So I think that my reading slump might finally be over, but we'll see. Hopefully August will be better. I'm going to try to stay positive because I have been enjoying the past couple of books that I've been reading. But either way, with that said, I have a lot of books to share with you today because I never ended up getting around to making a mid-month wrap up. So we have a lot to get through. So yeah, let's get started. First up, I wanted to quickly share with you um, two books that I ended up making reading vlogs for. So first I made a reading vlog for Lilac by B.B. Reed. So this is a reverse harem romance. It's the first ever reverse harem romance that I ever read. And that is why I vlogged it for you guys. So if you want to see how that experience ended up going for me, then make sure to check out that vlog. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll have it linked in the description below. And then I also ended up making a reading vlog this month about The Bridge Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen. So this is a fantasy romance and I decided to try reading this book to help hopefully get myself out of the reading slump that I was being in. Like somebody gave me this idea to like try switching up genres a little bit, like, you know, cleanse your palate a bit. So I decided to pick this one up because I haven't read a fantasy in a very long time and I vlogged the whole thing. So if you want to see how that ended up going, then make sure to check out this vlog. Again, I'll have it linked down below and I did make this one spoiler free. So if you want to hear a little bit more about this book and my thoughts on it, then make sure to watch that video. So yeah, two books that I read this month and then happens to be, I did do a couple of rereads. So I did do a reread of Underlock by Marianne Zapata, which is a slow burn motorcycle club a romance. You're following this girl who just got a job as the new receptionist in this tattoo parlor, tattoo parlor shop. And she's going to end up having a romance with the boss that also happens to be in a motorcycle club. So very good book. I did read it already and I decided to reread it and I enjoyed it just as much the second time around. So so very happy I decided to pick this one up and then happens to be very slowly throughout this month I did end up starting to do a full reread of the Shadow Hunter universe so this month I did get seven books in I read the entire Mortal Instruments series and I also read the first book in the Eldest Curses series so I did read it in this order the Eldest Curses series it's technically like on its side but according to like you know the timeline it does takes place in between these two books and that's why I decided to read it in that order so I really did enjoy jumping back into this universe and I definitely plan to continue with the universe more in August. So had a great time rereading these and I'm very excited to reread some more from this universe. So yeah, that was seven books and then happens to be the first books that I ended up picking up in the month of July was Binding 13 and then Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh. So this is a duet and you definitely have to read both books to get your happily ever after. And they are very, very thick. They're a huge commitment, but they were so freaking good. So if you're willing to give them the time, I highly, highly recommend them. They were actually one of the only five stars that I gave out this month. But either way, in this book, you're following this girl who is a bit of a loner and she has been very heavily bullied her entire life in her previous school. So at the beginning of this book, her parents basically decide to pull her out and put her in this private school and when she gets there she basically meets this guy named Johnny who is the very popular boy in school and he also happens to be like a rugby prodigy and anyway it's going to end up being their romance and the whole thing is is at the beginning of this book he finds out why she transferred schools and he ends up becoming like extremely protective over her extremely obsessed with her and everything along those lines so it's very like guy falls first guy falls harder situation and it is just a really amazing story in the first book you basically get to see like their romance being built up and then in the second book you basically end up you know finishing up everything that happens at the end of book one and also you end up finally getting to see like their relationship bloom like they don't really get together until the end of book one and then book two is them navigating their new romance so happens to be these books are not very light books they are very heavy on the trigger warning so I do highly recommend doing a little bit of research before you decide to like randomly jump into this book but if you look it up and you think that like you know you'll be fine with everything in the book then um, I do highly recommend checking it out because I I mean this book it was just amazing it was such a good experience and I really recommend it every single person check it out. So yeah, please um, look into this book a little bit and then give them a shot because they're so freaking worth it. But anyway, after that, I ended up 
picking up this book called Top Secret by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. So this is a very quick, very short MM romance. So it's like two males having a romance. And basically, um, this story starts out where this guy is dating this girl and for her birthday, she wants a threesome. So he ends up going on this like online dating site to try and find a guy to join them in this little thing that they want to do. And that is when he's going to meet this guy and they're going to end up having a romance. So the things that I didn't like about this book was actually the whole basis of how it started off. I didn't really like that he was in a relationship when all of this started going down. And it honestly made me really nervous that like there would be some things that I wouldn't be very comfortable with, but it happens to be the way that it played out. I was pleasantly surprised that the things that I was worried about didn't end up actually like really happening, but it still didn't make me any less uncomfortable about the situation of how these two people started their relationship. I really did like the whole aspect of this relationship. Like I liked the whole idea of like, you know, him not really realizing that like, you know, he was possibly interested in men and then like starting to like, you know, um, like, you know, what, what's it called? Like, you know, uh, explore his sexuality. I really did enjoy that whole aspect of, you know, the, the growth in him, but I just didn't really like the basis of this story. And that's actually why I had pushed reading off this book for such a long time. It was sitting on my TBR for a very long time because I was nervous about this one thing. And then it ended up being the one thing that I didn't really love about the book. So it's kind of on me because like that is actually like, you know, the whole basis of the story. You go into the book knowing that, but it's still, I didn't end up loving that aspect of it. And there were a couple of other things that I didn't really love about the story, but overall it was a pretty solid read. I think I ended up giving it like a three stars or so because I really did enjoy it, but also there were just some stuff about it that like didn't personally work for me and my personal taste. So yeah, overall mixed feelings towards this one, but uh, I feel like, you know, it, it was pretty solid in general. So anyway, Top Secret by Serena Bowen. I did read this month. And then after that, I ended up picking up this book called Rhythm, Chord, and Malakin by Mariana Zapata. And I unfortunately DNF'd this. I don't even know how much in. Maybe I got 100 pages. Maybe I got even less. I honestly don't really remember. But I really did hate so much about this book. I was kind of feeling like that I wasn't into it by like the first chapter. But I was like, it's a Mariana Zapata book. I should give it a little bit of a longer shot. Like, how, like sometimes her books don't click with me right away. But the further and further I got into this book, the more and more I was bothered by it. There was just so many weird things. Like this girl was making me so uncomfortable. I didn't even really like the guy. The whole situation about how it was all playing out. I just like, I wasn't into it for like every single reason of the book. And therefore I just, I DNF'd it. And I honestly don't regret it. And I'm just kind of going to forget that I ever read this book because honestly, like Marianne's Pot is one of my favorite um, authors of all time. And I really like feel bad that I DNF'd one of her books, but I just knew that this was what, this one was not going to work for me. So I got out of it before it, you know, it ruined me even further. So anyway, Anyway, yeah, DNF'd this book this month. But anyway, after that, I did end up reading this book called Irresistible by Melanie Harlow. So this is about this guy who is a single dad and he's working at this place called Cloverly Farms and he's gonna end up having an age gap romance with the boss's daughter. So he's been working there for a very long time. So he is very familiar with this girl. Like they've been around each other for a very long time and happens to be she even like babysits his kids sometimes. So they've known each other for a while and she happens to have had a crush on him this whole time and he never really knew and then something's obviously can happen between the, the between the two of them and then uh, like you know obviously a romance will eventually bloom between them and the thing is is that I didn't love this book because I didn't really like this guy so the whole thing about him is that he's a single dad, but he doesn't really ever want to be in another relationship. He doesn't want to get married again. He doesn't want to have another kid or anything along those lines. And I just didn't really like him. Like he didn't want anything except her. And I didn't really like that aspect of him. Like I wanted him to like kind of maybe change his feelings because he fell in love with her. But no, it's like he, he started getting with her and he still didn't want a relationship. He still didn't want more kids. He still didn't want to get married, but he just wanted to sleep with her. And I didn't really like how that all went down because eventually he caught feelings and he's like, oh, I can't do this. So he's going to break up with her. We got an 80% up breakup. And then his kids were the ones to basically like convince him like, no, you got to go after her and like make amends and everything like that because you obviously love her. So just the way that the whole book ended up playing out, I really just, I personally didn't really enjoy it. And then happens to be on top of all of that. Like I'm usually a huge fan of age gaps. And this one honestly made me a little bit uncomfortable. Like, I don't know if it was because like basically like she was a lot of years younger than him and he's known her since she was a kid. So like he kind of kept looking at her as if like, you know, she was still a kid and also like maybe because she babysat his kids like I don't know there was just something about the dynamics of it made me slightly uncomfortable and that's really saying something because usually I do like age gaps especially when it's like a single dad sort of vibe so anyway um I didn't end up loving this one but it's okay not every book's gonna be for everyone and I wasn't a bit of a reading slump so that probably added to it a little bit but either way I did read this this month and unfortunately didn't love it 
But anyway, after that, I did end up picking up this book called Blame It On the Champagne by Fiona Cole. And unfortunately, I did end up this book like a hundred and something pages in. And that was mostly because there was so much going on in this story and I was not into any of it. So I might have this a little bit out of order because there was so much going on. It's honestly hard to like remember like the order and how it happened. But basically, this girl was arranged to be married to this guy and she meets this guy and he ends up being like a total douche. Like he's literally like, oh, I'll rape you if you don't want to be like, you know, a very like you know a pleasant wife or something like that if you don't want to do anything I'm gonna force you to do it and she's like what the hell I don't want to marry you and so she ends up getting into like a marriage of convenience with her boss who who happens to like hate her or something like that except he is trying to take revenge out on her father so he basically like makes a prenup and like writes it in that like he's gonna secretly like screw her over by marrying her or something like that like there were so many weird dynamics going on in this book and like literally in the first hundred pages like both of these people like the boss that hates her and also this girl and up going to like this um event of sorts and they're gonna end up having some sort of like weird anonymous sex and like they were both thinking it's like oh i wish that i was the other person but like it was anonymous so they didn't realize who they were having sex with and then like they end up realizing it later like literally there were so much interesting things going on in this book and i just really was not here for it like i can keep going on like the weirdness of this book but basically it just wasn't a book for me and i dnf did 122 pages in and i honestly do not regret that so don't recommend checking this one out but if you are someone who enjoyed this book then I'm very happy that it worked for you even though it did not work for me. But anyway, after that one, I did end up picking up this book called The Outpost by Devney Perry. So the thing is, I have a very like love-hate relationship with Devney Perry. Sometimes her books work for me, sometimes they don't. And unfortunately, this is one of those that didn't work for me. And it's funny because usually one big reason why I don't enjoy her books are because she does do a lot of instant attraction or instant love sort of situation. And I'm not a fan of that. And it's funny that this book did have that, except I'm going to let it slide this time because they actually did not end up, you know, uh, going on their feelings right away like they tried to not get together even though they were automatically attracted to each other so that's actually not something that bothered me about this book one thing that did bother me about this book was that it was very heavy on the internal monologue it was a lot of like telling and no showing basically this girl ends up someone wants to kill her because she wrote a very like damning article for like you know a mafia person or something like that so she's currently on the run and this guy ends up helping her by bringing her to a cabin in the woods an outpost and he basically he's going to stay with her for a while and make sure she's okay while she's in the middle of the woods and she's not very familiar with her surroundings sort of thing so basically it's like a forced proximity situation and the thing is is that like they even though it was instant attraction like just the way the romance went down, I just didn't really like the whole telling and no showing aspect of it. And also, not to be mean, but I was honestly like very bored throughout the majority of the story. Like I feel like not a lot happened and I had a really hard time getting through it. So it's probably one of those situations where it's like, it's me, not you. I just didn't really connect to the story. It wasn't one that was particularly meant for like my, me and my type of like style of what I like to read. So unfortunately, I didn't love it. But if you are someone who loved it, then I'm very happy that you enjoyed it a lot more than me. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, that is that. And then after that, I did end up picking up this book called Funny Feelings by Tara Dewitt. So this is a book that I've been seeing on my feeds for a very long time. One second. I'm sorry. I have to fix my foot. It's like half falling asleep. I have to just get more comfortable. But either way, what was I saying? Funny Feelings. Um, This book has been on my feeds for a very, very long time. Well, not a long time because I think it's a new release. But either way, since the second it came out, I've been seeing a lot of really good things. So I decided to give it a shot. And I kind of went into this book thinking that it was one of those like unreal requited love sort of situations between a comedian and her manager because that is what it actually is like this girl has basically like had a big crush on her manager for a very long time and she happens to be a comedian so I really thought that it was going to be like a very funny story like she's a comedian shouldn't there be like a lot of like uh funny situations but happens to be I didn't really find the book to be funny at all and it also wasn't necessarily like unrequited love like they both kind of really liked each other for a very long time and it just like I don't know they finally like gave themselves a shot for whatever reason was were they fake dating oh yeah this girl was about to go on a tour and the person that she was going on tour with basically asked her to fake date her manager to kind of like try and hype up their tour a little bit and like you know get some detraction in the media or something like that so they finally got their um you know uh they got an excuse to finally like fake date and that is when their feelings started to come out and one of the big things about this book was that it was dual timeline which i'm never a big fan of so basically there were a lot of solid things in this book like tech Technically, like he was a single dad that was fake dating, you know, they both liked each other, stuff along those lines. Like she was a comedian, but like none of it ended up clicking with me. Like I honestly found myself pretty bored the entire time. I really didn't like the whole um, dual timeline sort of aspect. Like 
I just am not a big fan of that sort of like writing. And then also like I was bored. Like I was expecting it to be like a literally laugh out loud funny thing. Like you're following a comedian and I really didn't laugh like at any point in this book. So it does sound pretty mean. And if you are someone who really did enjoy this book, then I honestly like I see what you saw, but like for some reason it just didn't click with me. So unfortunately I did not end up enjoying this book and that is that. So yeah, let's move on from there. After that, I did also end up reading this book called Never Enough by Kelly Elliott. So this is the first book in her Meet Me in Montana series. And you're following this guy who is a professional bull rider and is also a single parent and is also extremely damaged from the way that um, he like no longer is with his wife. I don't really want to give away any spoilers, but basically he's a single parent and he's pretty damaged from his past relationship. And he's going to end up having a romance with a girl who just bought the house that he used to live in with his wife and his child. And it's going to end up being like their romance. Like she just moved from a city. She moved to a small town. So she's like, you know, getting settled in like a new space and everything like that. And they're not really going to get along right away, but it's going to end up having romance anyway. And the thing is, is that all of that sounds honestly so good. Like it sounds super up my alley, but it didn't end up uh, playing out the way that like works for me. So unfortunately I didn't like it. Basically one thing that I really didn't enjoy about this book was that it was instant attraction with an instant hate. And for some reason, the dynamics of how it ended up playing itself out, like didn't really work for me, especially because I'm not like an instant attraction person. But then on top of that, what I really didn't like is that this book took place over such a short amount of time. Like they literally like fell deeply in love within the course of like a week or two. And then there was one of those like 80% of breakups. And honestly, the breakup lasted longer than their actual relationship. And I just, I didn't really understand it. And then to top all of that off, there was a trope that happens at the end of this book, which I don't really want to say because I never know if it's an actual spoiler or not. But basically, I'm not a fan of very few things. And one of those things ended up happening at the end of this book. And that is one of the main reasons why I ended up really, really, really hating this book by the end of it. Like I was very back and forth being like, okay, well, there was some stuff that I didn't love, but like there was a lot of things that like I really did enjoy about it. But then we got that trope at the end of it. And I'm just like, nope, hated it by the end of it. So unfortunately I didn't love this book, but it happens to be, um, this was the first book in a series and I really did enjoy these side characters. And I know that one of them, like that two of them are going to end up getting their romance next. And because I really did enjoy the writing style and I enjoyed the vibe of the story, I do think I'm going to be continuing on with the series because even though this this story particularly did not work out for me. I do think that like this author does have a potential to work for me if the story is right. So anyway, yeah, that is basically that. And after that, I had one more book that I did not enjoy this month. I think this was kind of like the end of my reading slump, more or less. I ended up reading The Crush by Carla Sorensen. And what sucks is that I have been looking forward to this book for a very, very long time. This book is about Elliot and we got to see him in a lot of her other books because a lot of her books, like they basically intertwine. They're all about like the same characters, the same family of sorts, like the Ward family. You kind of originally met them in like the Washington Wolves companion series. And then you basically got a, a whole series about all of his sisters in the Ward sisters. And now this book is basically about him. He's the youngest in his family and he is now a professional football player. And right before he was about to get drafted, like the night before he was about to get drafted, this girl that he really liked ended up saying that like she likes him back and she basically wants to start a relationship with him. And he kind of like turns her down because like, look, I'm about to like start my football career. I'm not really ready for a relationship. So they end up going their separate ways. And now it's like five years later. And he basically realizes that he spent the past five years like getting really into football and he did nothing else for his life. So now he wants a relationship. So so he's going to like track her down and basically like beg her to give him like another shot of sorts. And in theory, that honestly sounds like a really solid story. And I wish, wish, wish that I loved this book. But unfortunately, it just did not work out for me for like every single reason. Like everything that ended up happening in this book, I wish had gone in a different direction. Like they first slept together and I'm like, I wish that they didn't sleep together. And then after they slept together, they ended up like not talking for a couple of months because like they just knew that like it wasn't their time. They couldn't make it work at that moment. But like, I just wish that like maybe they didn't sleep together and maybe they like, you know, uh, they just started talking slowly, like rekindling their relationship over phone, long distance, something like that. Like, but that didn't happen. They slept together and then they didn't talk for a while. And then there was just so much about this book. Like every time that something happened in this book, I'm like, why did it have to go that way? Couldn't have I just gone like a little bit of a different direction. And the the thing is, I think one big thing that I didn't like about this book was there was one major issue throughout this entire story, and that was location. She was living in one place and he was living in another place. And that was like the whole thing about the book. Like by the end of it, it finally worked itself out. And then they got their happily ever after because they were no longer in separate locations. And what I didn't like about it is that I knew what the answer to this location problem was from the first second of the book, because that was a big thing about like, you know, this entire universe that she's created. And that is exactly how it ended up playing itself out. And I just didn't understand 
understand why it took the entire book to finally get there. Like I just didn't understand why that had to be the whole problem when it could have, when it could have been worked out like way earlier in the story. So basically there was a lot about this book that unfortunately did not personally work for me, but it really might have been like my reading something. Like I was, I was having bad book after bad book and this book, it just didn't end up clicking for me. I really do think that everything that I didn't enjoy were valid things of why I didn't enjoy them. Like the way that it all worked out, I just wish it all went in a different direction. But also I was in a reading slump. So if you were someone who did like this book and you're like, what the hell are you saying? Then blame it on my reading slump. But also if you were someone who didn't enjoy this book for the same reasons, then I understand why you didn't like it. You know what I mean? But anyway, that was the last of the bad books that I read this month because right after that one, I did end up picking up this book called Drive by Kate Stewart and I absolutely loved this book. And I was honestly really surprised that I loved it because I went into this book knowing that it was a love triangle and everybody kept telling me, it's like, look, I know you're not into love triangles, but give this book a shot because it really is like an exception to be made. And I definitely agree with that. But one thing that I do want to say is that I didn't really feel it to be a love triangle. I did feel this book to be more of a right person wrong time a love story which I am more okay with that sort of situation and I think that is one reason why I really did end up loving this book even though I thought that I wouldn't love the love triangle thing even though I guess it could technically be considered a love triangle but basically I thought it felt more like right person wrong time so if you were considering reading this book but you were turned off by the love triangle aspect I am going to be another person to say like just give it a shot because I really do think that like the love triangle aspect won't bother you as much as you're worried it will bother you but either way in this book you're following this girl who is a budding like music journalist she really wants to write about music and she's gonna end up having a relationship with two different people she's gonna end up having a relationship with a drummer in a band and she's also gonna end up having a relationship with her boss who she's gonna end up like this boss he owns a um music you know magazine company and she's gonna end up having a relationship with him because she's gonna get a job with him and it's gonna like go that way but anyway, I don't really want to give it too much more detail about this book because I do think that Kate Stewart is one of those people who you just have to like go into her books knowing very little and just like figuring it out for yourself. And I do think that this was an amazing story and it did hurt a little bit. If you've read the Raven Hood series and you're worried that she's going to hurt your heart in the same way, then don't worry because even though it hurt, it did not hurt as much, but it still did give you all of those like Kate Stewart type of vibes. So I really loved this book. I know that I didn't give you too much information, but I do think think that it is worth giving it a shot. If it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work for you. But if it does work for you, then oh my God, will it actually work for you? So yeah, that is that. And then anyway, after this, I did have another book that I ended up really enjoying, which was Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold. So this is a reverse harem friends to lovers romance. You're following this girl who is really, really horrible at dating. And she happens to live across the hall from these three guys who run a relationship podcast. And she's really good friends with them. And one night she basically basically ends up telling them how she's having a really hard time with dating and happens to be their podcast is kind of like at a stalemate at the moment and they want to do something new. So they come up with this idea to basically fake date her and teach her everything that she kind of needs to know about dating. So that is kind of, you know, the beginning of the story. And then they're going to end up getting themselves into this reverse harem fake dating situation. That's going to obviously turn from like, you know, uh, whatever it is into lovers. So Honestly, I really did enjoy this book for what it was, but I do have to say that it is about 80% sex and about 20% plot. There is not much to this book, but the little bit of the book that we got, like the little bit of the plot that we got, I honestly did enjoy. And it was somehow enough to actually get me through the story because usually I'm not really a big fan of like very um, sex heavy like stories. I really need a little bit more of the plot and a little bit less of the sex, but I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was. Like, what more can I say? Like, it is what it is. And I I, I, I picked it up at the right time and I really liked it for what it was. I liked it a lot more than I liked the first reverse harem book that I read. So I feel like that is saying something. So anyway, if you're into reverse harem romances or you even want to give them a shot, then I do think that this is a solid one to go with because I, I really did like randomly enjoy it. So yeah, nothing, um, too much, nothing too bad to say about this. There were a couple of things that I didn't love, but honestly, I really enjoyed my experience reading it and that sh that's all that should really matter. So yeah, that is that. This is actually the last book that I technically finished in the month of July but happens to be I am in middle of reading here with me by Samantha Young and it is the last day of July the day that I'm filming this video like this video is going up tomorrow which will be the first day of August so happens to be if you're watching this and you want to see what I ended up thinking about this book then I'm going to recommend that you check out my review that I'll have posted on a Goodreads as well as um on my review highlight in on my profile page on Instagram because every time I do finish a book I do right away post 
a review to Instagram and Goodreads and then I'll later come on here and share with you what my thoughts like after the fact because you know that's just the way that I do all this sort of stuff but either way I am you know a little bit into this book and I do plan on finishing this book tonight so it will be the last book that I did read in the month of July so basically I'm enjoying this book for now. It's a bit of like a romantic suspense thing. This girl is basically getting to like know her father that had abandoned her a long time ago. Like she's seeking him out, she gets there and then there's a mystery going on. So basically there's a lot of stuff going on in this book and I don't know everything fully yet. So I'm not gonna give you a full synopsis, but I am enjoying it for what it is now. And if you wanna hear how, what I ended up thinking about this book, then make sure to check out my reviews on Goodreads and Instagram. So yeah, that is that. Is that. that is all the books that I ended up reading in the month of July. So I hope that you, um, enjoyed watching this video. I hope that I gave you some insightful information into all of the books that I mentioned today. So yeah, with that said, um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not currently subscribed. And um, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. So yeah, until next time, enjoy reading.